How long has it been since the anime community had a show that dominated everyone's charts harder than Eren becoming the most loved and hated character in anime history? Ranking of Kings has done just that. Haven't heard of it? Then I'm more disappointed than the delivery driver that has to drop off Dokimakuras to my house. <sighs> but now, you get to listen to me talk about a butterball. In a world filled with gods, demons, giants, and every other fantasy creature that we're, we're used to by now, there was bound to come a land that follows the same principles as your favorite YouTuber's tier list. Each kingdom in Ranking of Kings is, well, ranked, based on how prosperous the land is, how good the armies are, and how much of a chad their leader is. But even with all that in mind, the actual life of the story lies within this little ray of sunshine. This is Boji. He is a prince to the kingdom of Bose led by, well, you guessed it, king of don't f*** me. What? What Boji has in mind is simple. He wants to become the world's best king. But in a kingdom that sees him unfit to become the ruler, he's bound to run into some issues. Still, not just any issues really. You see, Boji is unique. And I'm not just saying that since this tiny ball of happiness holds a special place in my heart but because Boji can neither hear nor talk. On top of all of that, he has little to no physical strength at all. And can I just mention that when I first started ROK, I despised his kingdom for having the audacity to look down on this absolute chad of a prince. But what made Ranking of Kings manage to rise to the chop of everybody's charts so quickly? These past few years, every other show has more or less focused on the MC trying to overcome his fear of being an absolute incel. Well, that's not always bad, with shows like Mushoko Tensei proving that this can actually be done correctly, Ranking of Kings decides to focus not only on Boji, but also on everyone else around him. For example, you have Bose, or Boss, or however you pronounce it, who seems like your typical everyday badass who cares for her son. And while he does care, you soon realize that he's more willing to sacrifice anything to become the world's biggest asshole, I mean, Chad. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you have Queen Haleen, Haleen, he, 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 you have the Queen, who just kind of seems like a bitch, later realizing that every time Boji gets hurt, she's actually the one that comes to heal him, showing that she's not just cold-hearted, but she's also a tsundere. It's not like this with just those three either, but with every character in the series showcasing some absolutely phenomenal world building. But we can't just talk about how well the story's creator Sosuke Toke did without mentioning the studio behind the seemingly odd animation being Wit Studio. I'm sure that this goes without saying that Wit has animated some fantastic shows, such as like the first three seasons of AOT, Venland Saga, and The Ancient Magus Bride. However, with Ranking of Kings being an art style somewhat reminiscent of earlier anime like Princess Mononoke and March Comes In Like a Lion, it was hard to tell if they would miss harder than someone in full cosplay trying to hook up with another person at a health convention. These two things... <laughs> these two things combined to create an absolute masterpiece of an anime for everyone to enjoy. Whether you're into action, slice of life, or digging into more profound psychological shows, ROK is bound to have some aspect that you're looking for. You have this happy-go-lucky prince that gets yeeted out of the position of becoming king. A douche of a little brother that wants nothing more than to become the king himself. Only to find out he's being controlled by something ripped straight out of the Disney movies. As well as episode 2 where I cried more than a red-headed stepchild in an 80s film. That one hurt. Ranking of Kings is bound to go down in the greats, and if... It doesn't, I think I'll lose almost all of my hope in the community for failing to realize what this show has brought to the table. A fairy tale turned dark. From the massive detail in the world building to the development of every single character, every aspect of it seems to be so well thought out ever since its initial release. For example, we aren't told that Domas is frustrated with how Boji begins weaker than my will not to buy more Dokimakuras. Instead, <laughs> You see the story unfold in more subtle details like facial expressions, reactions, and how every action has almost an immediate consequence. And that's only a tiny bit of the beauty that is Ranking of Kings. If you're looking for something to recommend to your friends that won't make them cringe more than when my best friend walked in on me watching high school D&D, 
then definitely sit them down and physically force their eyelids open to pay attention to storytelling at its finest. But really, what makes Rankin of Kings genuinely worth watch is how relatable the show can be, from dealing with issues you think no one but you understands, to just dealing with the prejudice in everyday life. It really does hit every sensitive aspect with a more positive outlook of how you can deal with it. Who cares what others think? So what if you're not what others expected? At the end of the day, what really matters is that you stay true to yourself and see that the world is yours with that alone. And that's what Ranking of Kings has really showed me. Look, we had some decent shows in 2021, and the anime we're getting now seems to be picking up the pace from the past few years. However, if you want a true, true masterpiece of a show, then ROK is the one for you. I'm sure the community will accept it with open arms if a spinoff ever, ever comes out. But then again, why would such a perfect show need something different?